Hey everyone, uh, just doing a new video in a new series for today. Um, today I'm going to cover the first video and I'll probably make um, a few more videos after it. Hopefully I can get enough focus on the small parts uh, that I need to get focusing on, but if I can't, um, apologies for that, um, I'll just have to see how we go. Now today I'm talking about uh, capacitors and in coming videos I'll be talking about recapping and all sorts of different reasons for that but I wanted to start off with a more of an introduction video to people who might know what caps are but don't realize there are quite a few different uh, constructions, versions, uh, reasons for using um, and that sort of thing. So I sort of want to go through an intro video. I have got a list of things I want to go through. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but for starters, the main thing that I want to start off with is why do you need to recap? Why, why should I be interested in caps? What, what, why, why have we got these things? Why, why is there interest in them? Uh, why do people talk about recapping? Why do people say you've got to do it? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to talk a bit about that. Now, the main thing is basically everything has a lifetime. You know, transistors have a lifetime, chips have a lifetime. Everything is when you turn something on, turn something off, you heat cycle it. Uh, heat cycling can kill components, uh, can kill caps, um, especially tantalums, um, which I will talk about in a bit. Um, the other reason is caps that have an electrolytic inside. Um, sorry, caps that have a dielectric liquid inside, which are like um, electrolytics, uh, will dry out over time from heat uh, and um, ESR from the equivalent series resistance that they have as well. So a lot of it is, is basically just the lifetime of a cap and when they fail and how to know how to replace them and why to replace them. And that's the thing is, is they just have a life and pretty much anything that any retro gear or anything that you're working on currently at the moment that you're trying to build anything from sort of like, you know, the 90s, um, 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, pretty much needs recapping now. And that's just because of, even if it's just from age, um, even if it's not something you use every single day, if it's something you use every single day, then it needs to be recapped pretty soon because um, the caps will basically be, yeah, pretty much at their, at their end of life. Uh, they'll either be leaking or thinking about leaking, um, and that's one of the bad things. That's that's one of the big reasons for recapping is because a lot of caps leak out the bottom, and it's corrosive. So they start eating into the actual PCB that they're on, uh, and you don't want to do that. You want to get them off before they start doing that, put fresh caps in, and that'll give you another 20 or 30 years to go. So that's basically the reason for why you actually want to replace them. There are a few other little odd things. Um, there was in the 2000s to 210s, maybe a little bit later. Um, Japanese caps are probably the best you can buy. I like using Panasonic's, uh, which are all made in Japan. But a guy went across to Japan uh, from, I think, it, I can't remember if it was from Taiwan or from China. It was probably from China. Went over to Japan and tried to copy the um, recipe for the electrolytic that's actually inside the electrolytic caps. Unfortunately, he got it a little bit wrong. So he came back home and started making all these caps and, and saying that they're all high quality and you know just as good as the Japanese caps. And unfortunately, they started off not too bad, but in the end, the mixture was wrong. The electrolyte inside was wrong. And the caps then ended up blowing their tops out the top or blowing their, their bottoms out the bottom and basically just creating mayhem. And you'll know this, a lot of motherboard companies got done for it uh, and, and you'll see them, you'll see the caps, the tops are just popped out um, and they're either leaking out the bottom or um, yeah, popping out the top. So that's one little story for recapping as well. Um, and that affects a lot of things, not just computers computers it motherboards it was very very and and even graphics cards other computer stuff as well not just motherboards um i've seen it a lot in tvs um i've done a couple of tvs where i've done a full cap because they're all leaking and then the tv works fine again um i fixed a tv for my father-in-law and i think it went for another 
five, five or six, seven years. So, and it already done like five or six, seven years anyway. Um, so that was, that was pretty cool. So yeah, so caps, caps do need doing, they do need attention. Um, you can do them yourself. Uh, I'm going to do videos on actually recapping the actual physically desoldering them and, and actually what to do and what to replace them with and all that. That's all going to come. Uh, this video I really just wanted to do as an introduction into what caps are, uh, what the different types are and how to identify them. That was the main thing that I really wanted to go through. Now one thing you'll hear thrown around a lot is caps have what's called an ESR, which is an equivalent series resistance. And it's basically if you hook up a cap to a multimeter, a very precise one, obviously, and measure the resistance, it, every cap has a, an internal resistance. It's just how it is. Now, the higher that resistance is, the shorter the life of the cap, and the hotter the cap will get. Okay? Now, the other interesting thing is, because of how ESI works and Ohm's law, um, basically, the higher the voltage of the cap, the lower the ESR is naturally of that cap because of Ohm's law and how it works with um, capacitance and construction and voltage and uh, and power dissipation. That's how it all works. So if you're looking at um, caps in general, uh, most caps will have a list of what their ESR is and usually a, a lifetime rating at so many degrees um so that's that's something that that you know most data sheets on caps will have so that's what esr is so it's important a lot of people think it's rubbish and you shouldn't really worry about it um i tend to disagree um and i'm not talking about the difference between high esr and low esr and the difference in price between caps i just think you know buy caps you can afford uh, buy, buy something good. I mean, if you're going to go to the trouble of recapping, you might as well buy something really good and do the job properly and, and be done for, you know, 20 or 30 years. Um, so that's my answer to that. Now, I want to start with the electrolytic caps. They're the most common caps you'll find. Uh, most people are familiar with them. They're these little guys. I've got different types here I wanted to show. So these are basically these little guys. Now, they're in a little tin. This is an aluminium little tin with the plastic over it, so it says what voltage and um, what microfarads they're in. So these are just on a tape. They're supplied on a tape out of a machine. That's so that they can go in an automatic machine. Um, but, yeah, they're not always on tape, but these, these, these ones are that I bought, these ones. These are the Panasonic FR series. These are the ones that I recommend people use. Uh, they're 100 rated to 105 degrees. Uh, and they're very, very low ESR, and they're high life. So the FR, the Panasonic FR, are really good to use. They're my go-to. Uh, if I want to do any audio stuff, I normally go for the fine gold ones, made by, I think, Nishikon. Um, I think they're the ones who do fine gold. It's FG is the, the series, and it stands for fine gold, so I normally use them for audio. So these are electrolytics. Now, unfortunately, because inside there is actually a liquid, and that's why they're sealed, you can see... Oh, you might not be able to see very well, but there's a, just a little rubber seal in here, and, that, and then this bit's actually crimped. Now, basically, what happens is with age, they dry out, so that's that's one thing. Um, but the good thing about them is, as long as you can get them uh, before they dry out or before they start leaking out the bottom, because you can look at caps, and they, the electrolytics might look fine on the top. They might not be domed or anything, but they could be leaking out the bottom, uh, so very important, even though you might have a board that looks good, that has electrolytics, uh, please do replace them, uh, because they can leak out the bottom, and when they leak out the bottom, it's the worst, because then they start eating the tracks straight away. When they pop out the top, it doesn't sort of like flow down and then all over the board. Usually popping out the top won't affect uh, eating of the board, um, but it'll definitely show you that you know something's wrong. I mean, if they're domed, if there's, if there's any defect to the top, replace them um, because they've they're just past their life already but if you've got a whole board and some of them are good and some of them are not so good or you're not sure just do all the caps just blanket do them all that way it's done and you don't have to worry so these are electrolytic caps now they come in different temperatures as well so you've got 85 degrees 105 and then 125 normally I use 105 
Uh, all the Panasonic FRs should be 105. Um, they're basically 105 is fine to go with. Um, these are the Panasonic uh, 125 degree ones. If you can see, they're a nice bright goldy color. Um, so you can tell which ones are which. What series of these is it? M or MZ? Okay, so these are the M series on these ones. Um, so yeah, so these are 125. So I do use a little bit of them. They are very expensive and hard to get. Um, but they do last a heaps longer and have a longer um, lifetime. So that's electrolytic caps, guys. So they're the most common ones that are used. The second most common is probably ceramic caps. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a very good picture of this or not. Let's see if I can get a picture that's not... There we go. These guys here that are sitting in their board, you can see it's a number. Is it 10... What is it? 10... Uh, 101, 101 I think it says, yeah 101, now this number tells you how big the cap is, it's a value, you can get a sheet, you basically do, you've got the value, then you've got a multiplier, you work that out and then you can work out what the cap is, now most ceramics don't have their voltage, but they normally start at around 50 volts, okay their advantage uh, is they're non-polarised, they're very, very stable for use in RF circuitry, so radio frequency stuff. Uh, it's only radio stuff, they're really, really good. Their only disadvantages is their small capacitance, um, their microfarads. They're not very high. Most are in the nanos uh, or the micros. Uh, they're not, because they physically don't have a lot of size, basically a ceramic cap is two plates um, with a solid dielectric between it, and that's it. They're not folded, they're not wrapped around. So because they're only small, as you can see, these guys aren't all that big. Um, that's why they've got low capacitance. But if you want to use them as decoupling caps on chips uh, for like 0.1, so 0.1 micro and 1 micro, uh, ceramics are fine for that. They're, they're really, really fine. They are basically almost indestructible. They will last forever. They do not need to be replaced. Um, ceramics don't need to be replaced at all. You can just leave them. They'll be fine. Unless they're physically damaged or they've been overstressed. Um, that's the only time that you need to replace them. But normally, um, they're fine. You don't need to replace them. So that's ceramics. Now, I wanted to go on to mon monolithic caps. Getting all my names mixed up now. Um, monolithics are really good for quite a few reasons. And that's these little guys here. Now, the biggest, these ones will have the same, I don't, I don't even know if you can see that. I don't even think I can get the number on it. Like a ceramic cap, it has the numbering system on it. And you can actually work out what their value is. Um, sometimes they have a voltage on them. Um, I'll just see if I can see if this one, no, this one doesn't. Um, so this one just says 407. Uh, so you can work 407, 405. Um, so yeah, so this, this little guy here is a monolithic. Uh, he's non-polarized, uh, just like the uh, ceramics. Ceramics are non-polarized. They're also a solid cap, so there's no electri uh, electrolytic, so they don't wear out. Um, so they're really good for that. They don't have high, high microfarads, but a lot higher than what the ceramics do. So for decoupling caps for 0.1s and uh, 1UFs, um, these are perfect. Now, they do come in different colours. They are dipped. So, you've got that little guy there that I showed you, which, let me see, can I get... There we go, get him. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. This little guy here, you can see... Oh, I don't know if you can see it right. It's orange. It's more of a reddy, orangey-brown colour. It's still a monolithic, though, so it's still the same type of cap. You can also get uh, monolithics in axials as well. So there's a whole heap of those little guys there. Same numbering system, uh, non-polarized as well, just, they're just axials, so they do have that. And there's another monolithic as well. Now, the one thing I did want to bring up um, about monolithics is there are different solid dielectrics inside them. I prefer what's called X7R, and uh, it's my favorite one. It's probably one of the best. Or if you can't get X7R, get Y5Y. Um, and, and you'll be fine. Any, any, any of those two, um, you're on the right track and, and they'll be fine. Now, the one thing that I do want to bring up now, I'm going to do a little bit of a quick 
preview of the next caps because they do look very similar. I want to make sure that people can realize that the caps are actually different and what to look for. So these guys here are your monolithics, which I've been talking about. Now these guys over here, put Mr. Cap back, this guy here and this guy here. Now you might think, hmm, they look very much like monolithics, about the same color. Yeah, okay, the size is a bit bigger. These guys here are normally called green caps or film caps or polyester caps, uh, depending on which one you want to call them. Green caps is what they first came out, and that's these guys. But this guy here is still the same sort of cap. He's just been dipped in a different um, coating. Their advantage is, is they're usually really high voltage. You can get really high voltage. They're usually fairly stable, uh, and they don't usually die because there's no actual liquid inside. It's a solid dielectric. Um, I have heard of them dying, um, but it's it's very odd and, and very different. But the big thing here is is that on them, it usually has the I need something that's a little bit non-magnetic. Where's something that's a little bit non-magnetic? Where is it? Where's my? This will do. Right, my adjustment screwdriver, which is non-magnetic, so I'm stop pulling these guys away. You'll you'll have the value written on it now. Oh, crikey's think you can see it there 104 i think it is and then below it actually says the voltage in volts this little guy which i can't even see is 47 474 250 volt i think it says I'm not sure if you can see i can try and get that in the angle so yeah so these here are as i said they're green caps or film or polyester not to get mixed up with monolithics Okay, these are still non-polarized. Okay, so these are non-polarized. These guys are still non-polarized as well, so that's all cool. But it's very, very easy to get them mixed up. The usually the big the big difference and how you can tell the easiest way is these guys are physically bigger, uh, plus they have the voltage uh, rating written on them. Monolithics don't. They've only got the size and not the voltage. They're normally 50, 100 volts. When you buy them, you can find out what voltage you want. But that's normally the, the easiest way is size, because these guys are bigger. And they've actually got the size of the voltage written on them, whereas these guys don't. So that's one way of, of telling the difference between, uh, between those two. Now, where else am I up to? Where's the next one? Ah, yes, of course. Now... To add a little bit more confusing stuff to that is the next cap, which is probably the worst cap you can possibly find, is what's called a tantalum cap. Now you're probably thinking, why do I not like tantalums and why do I think that you shouldn't use them and why I want you to replace them as soon as possible? When tantalums die, when they reach the end of their life, they short themselves out. So you can imagine all these caps here, because these are all tantalums, these bright yellow guys. If they all shorted themselves out and they're on the main supply rail for the um, for this board, or even if one of them did it, the damage it causes to the board and the damage to the power supply and related circuitry is huge. So that's why I don't recommend tantalums at all. Get rid of them. Replace them with either an electrolytic um, or a monolithic. Um, those two, you'll be able to get all the same ranges. Now, what I wanted to do is these yellow guys here these are the surface mount tantalums that you can see they're not always yellow um okay this board's only got yellow ones on it of course hasn't it because i'm trying to demo it uh so on this board it is all the yellow ones now this guy here i had to actually take this from the motherboard from the 386 because i couldn't find any through hole ones all i could find was uh surface mount ones now i'm not sure if you'll be able to see on that but they do have the difference between a tantalum, a monolithic, or a film. These are polarized. Okay, tantalums are polarized. Doesn't matter if it's a surface mount or it's a through hole like this guy here. They're both polarized. And you'll actually see there's a little line. I'm hoping you can see it really well. There's a little line there that will actually tell you um, that that's the... That's the um, that's the, the positive side of the cap. So that's something to be cautious about because normally most caps will mark the negative side, but on tantalums, they mark the positive side instead. So just be really careful with that. 
One of the big things which I should have said straight up is before you remove a cap, check to see what the polarity is because not always the silk screen is not always going to be right. Most of the time it is, but sometimes it can be wrong. Uh, I know a lot of Cortec uh, chassis for arcade machines have got the wrong, there's two caps in there that have got the wrong silk screen. So you can accidentally put the cap back in around the wrong way if you don't check. So it is a good idea to check. Um, the other reason for checking is that you might come across a non-polarized or a bipolar cap and it won't actually say plus or minus on the board and you could accidentally put in a polarized cap which will stop the circuit from working. So that's another reason. So these guys, as I said, they've got the line on the positive side. They've also got the value usually written on them and the voltage which these guys don't, they've got the value, but it's in the number code. Whereas these guys actually, I think this is a four, I think it says four U7. So this is 4.7 UF. I'm pretty sure I don't, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a very good view of it. I'm trying, but yeah. So that's a tantalum guys. And they are the worst, absolutely worst. The only reason for using them is, well, there isn't many. Um, they're cheap, okay? That's probably that's probably the reason, the biggest reason they get used is that they're cheap. Whoops, I'm out of focus again. Oh, get that back in. So yeah, so they're tantalums. Now, the next lot, which is last on the list, hopefully, as I've gone through them all, is these guys here. Now, these are a surface mount cap. You can get these in through hole. These are Panasonic SVP uh, solid polymer caps. Um, they have all the advantages of the electrolytic of the electrolytic caps, but they're actually the construction inside is solid uh, and they last a heaps longer. So these guys, you might be able to see it says SVP. Oh, I don't know if I can get it. Can I get a? Maybe there we go. You can see that, and you can see it at the bottom. You've got the value, and then you've got the voltage. So these guys are really good. You can get them in through hole, but they're mostly in a surface mount. And I have actually got a video where I've got about how to remove these and and uh, replace them and stuff. But I needed to talk about them because they are the solid polymer caps, uh, which are very, very important for life. So that's them. Now I think... I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to do an intro video just so that people knew what sort of caps are out there. Now this this is basically it. Um, there are a few things on the outer, but they're not common and you're probably not going to come across them. So there's no point really pointing them out. Um, the biggest thing to remember is the difference between your films, uh, you know, films, which are these two, Green caps, films, polyesters is the difference between those, monolithics, and your three hole tantalum, and your surface mount tantalums, which are all the orange guys on here. That's probably the, the easiest way to get confused is to get these guys mixed up. The rest are all pretty much self explanatory. They're different shapes, they're used for different things, etc. Um, etc. Et so that's it guys, I just wanted to do an intro video. I'm gonna do more videos on recapping, uh, also substitution of both voltage and um, microfarad so that people can know how to make, if you let's say you're recapping a motherboard and you wanna make it a little bit better, um, talk about different caps there and different voltages and uh, microfarad ratings that you can use and increase to make the board a lot more stable uh, and, and just a longer life overall. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're interested in anything else, please let me know. Uh, jump on Discord and send me a message or email or whatnot. And I will see you in the next video.